Anyone who has heard my opinions before and knows my opinions tend to be very uniquely... me. Sometimes harsh, especially on Heaven's Word. But among all the fights in the game, among 10 years of content, Heaven's Word has what I feel is the single best trial in the entire game. Better than any trial in Stormblood, Shadowbringers, Endwalker, the Singularity Reactor Extreme shined above them all. Every trial that came after, I compared to it. Zervin, Shinryu, even maybe Ultimate Raiding. I compared it all to my memories and nostalgia for the Singularity Reactor. So at the American Fan Fest, the announcement of Singularity Reactor Unreal was the singular most exciting announcement. Not the new content, the new jobs, or any of the other genuinely exciting stuff. But the ability to replay this masterpiece of a fight. I've told myself over and over, I want to do Unreal for the rewards. But every time, I do it one or two times, then stop. This fight, I want to do every week, so very much. It's a level of hype that is bound to failure. I've experienced it plenty enough. Xenoblade is amazing, I hear. Xenoblade 1 has the worst protagonist of any game, and that's saying a lot when Titus exists. Like a Dragon is the best Yakuza game. Maybe if you've never played a video game before. The Singularity Reactor is the best fight ever. Well, obviously I'm going to hate it and have no idea why I liked it. So what was my experience when it came out? What did I feel? Did it live up to my own hype and memories? No way it could have, right? Well, it exceeded them. The fight is still pure perfection. It makes me feel a level of excitement that basically everything else fails to reach. This fight remains as glorious as ever, surpassing even Dragon Song Reprise in some aspects. There's an energy, a frenzy that not even the infinite chaotic nature of Ultimate can match. This doesn't feel like just a boss throwing tons of mechanics at you. This feels like exactly what it is. An entire elite force and their king, all aiming to end everything to do with you. To stomp you into the ground and erase you. People call this mechanics vomit only because they're used to having the numbers advantage. It's eight on one powerful being. Here, the roles are reversed. We might still have a party of eight, but Thordon has the entire Heaven's Ward at his command. And oh boy, do you feel that. You're not dealing with one enemy throwing several spells. You're dealing with 13 different enemies all working together. They have the numbers. You have no recourse. Struggle to survive onslaught after onslaught. This is shown best by the fight itself, especially the final phase. For years and years after, no other bosses could make the claim the Heaven's Word could in this minstrel imagined dream. Together, they shatter reality itself, taking control of the infinite skies above and twisting it into swirling energy that bends to their will. This is deep into the fight, but is where the limiters come off. A struggle to reach this point, and the real fight only just begins. And it begins with Knights of the Round 1, with the strike that killed Harshafont. One of the healers is randomly chosen to be stunned. They are the target to be speared through, to be killed just like our lost friend. The only way to save them is to block the blow. The off-tank in front to take the main hit, and everyone else behind to take the rest. Failure to resolve the mechanic will result in an instant wipe. You're not being incapacitated. Your ally is dead. All hope is lost. And there is no way to avoid doing this mechanic, thanks to the teamwork of the Heaven's Word ensuring the healer cannot escape. Night of the Round 2 brings a different kind of teamwork back-to-back -back chains of attacks, while Thordon messes with you by moving the Eye of Nidhogg wherever he wishes. Thordon uses his influence to do a gaze, while you have to deal with cascading AoEs, towers, void puddles, a knockback, and a final stack blast from Thordon. They're chaining attacks back-to-back, -back, no pause in between beyond what there is specifically for being able to solve the mechanic. You have to move, then move, then move, then move. You then get barely a moment to breathe before the next one casts. I mentioned how this fight rivals even ultimates, and this is why. An ending coil of Bahamut brought with us the idea of trios. Similar parts in ultimates after are referred to as having trios. 
but Thornton? Thornton already had this on lock. Knight of the Round is back to back to back to back to back trios. Knight of the Round 3 sees Thornton using his Nidhogg Eye as bait. Not only does he power up, but it's a complete bait. We know there's a gaze coming from both him and the eye in the sky, but not here. This is there to distract you from the Dragoon that is secretly hiding somewhere at the edge of the arena. An eye that will not be used, and a lightning strike to scramble you. Teamwork here is a matter of divide, conquer, and subterfuge. The safest place to be for the Dragoon Jump player is the opposite side of the map as the party, who are also stacking to soak a blast. But you have to avoid the Dragoon Dive and another player taking a Spiral Thrust. Divide and Conquer. When this fails, Knights of the Round 4 seeks to overwhelm, and it very much has succeeded and continues to do so to this day. Mechanics vomit because they want you dead. A gaze from Thornton in the eye, fire tethers, comets, ice puddles, Ashalon's mercy leaving very little space to move to, and I've not even been mentioning the ancient quaggas in Heavenly Heals, of which here will be quagga, heal, and then quagga again. I take this as a bit of a signal to the Heaven's Word to put their all into one final attack. Can't kill off a healer with a spear, back-to-back -back strikes failed, disorienting and dividing didn't drive us apart, overwhelming us with combined strikes wasn't enough. It's time to put all of their power into this. Strike together. Strike strong. Knight of the Round 5 is their final gambit. Paladins together cast holy. The Dragoons all jump together, giving you but a moment before the next lands. The Dark Knight protects Thornton as he charges a Sacred Cross to kill you off with one slice. But the rest of the team is right behind him. A triple-powered purity of soul into a triple-powered absolute conviction. One final gaze goes off as Sacred Cross does. One more Quagga, one more Buster, and then the final push to Enrage. They came at you from all sides, all different strategies, all seeking to end you. Again, this was no singular combatant to struggle against. You fought 13 different people at once, and while Drew is much harder, and Dark Thord and Trio's far more dangerous, it pales to the pure frenzy that is this minstrel's ballad. This fight remains the fight I will compare all others to. My skill as a player is as a 4.5 times legend. I'll go back and finish Drew one day. I am on way better hardware, no longer having to do the fight at like 15 FPS. And yet still, still to this day, I find this to be an epic, all-around amazing fight. Everything has changed, but this fight remains the same. The best fight in the entire game. Take care and may the power of Anadid Hogs lay waste to your enemies.